she appears remarkably well-preserved for being 75,000 years old, especially considering that her skull was shattered into 200 fragments, potentially due to a rockfall, before researchers painstakingly reconstructed it over the past six years. This is Shanidar Z, a Neanderthal woman whose facial features were reconstructed by archaeologists at the University of Cambridge in England. By recreating her face, rather than merely the skull, the university mentioned in a report on its website, experts have gained fresh insights into the actual appearance of our ancient relatives. Scientists unearthed the female Neanderthal in 2018 from a cave in Iraqi Kurdistan, a site where this species had consistently returned to bury their dead. The cave gained renown from excavations in the late 1950s, which revealed several sequentially buried Neanderthals. Neanderthals and humans have distinctly different skull shapes, stated Dr. Emma Pomeroy, a paleoanthropologist from the Department of Archaeology at Cambridge. Neanderthal skulls exhibit large brow ridges and no chins, with a forward-projecting midface that gives them notably prominent noses. However, the reconstructed face indicates that these differences were less pronounced in life. It may be easier to understand how interbreeding between our species occurred, considering that nearly everyone alive today retains some Neanderthal DNA. Neanderthals are believed to have become extinct about 40,000 years ago, and new discoveries of their remains are rare. The Neanderthal at Shanidar Cave are recent finds and possibly the most well-preserved specimen discovered this century. While previous discoveries were simply numbered, this one has been named Shanidar Z, although it is thought to be the upper half of a specimen found in 1960. The skull had been crushed, likely by a rockfall, shortly after death, after the brain had decayed, but before the skull was filled with soil and was further compacted by tens of thousands of years of sediment buildup. When the archaeologists discovered it, the skull had been compressed to about two centimeters thick. Scientists meticulously uncovered the remains, which included a nearly complete skeleton down to the waist, and applied a glue-like consolidant to reinforce the bones and the surrounding sediment. They extracted Shanida Z in numerous small blocks wrapped in foil from beneath seven and a half meters of soil and rock at the core of the cave. In the Cambridge Laboratory, researchers performed micro CT scans of each block before carefully diluting the glue and using the scans as a guide for the extraction of bone fragments. Lucia Lopez Pauline, the lead conservator, manually assembled over 200 skull fragments, including the upper and lower jaws, to restore it to its original form. Each skull fragment is delicately cleaned, while glue and consolidant are reapplied to stabilize the bone, which can be as soft as a biscuit soaked in tea. It's akin to a high-stakes 3D jigsaw puzzle. Processing a single block can take more than two weeks. The team also utilized forensic science techniques, studying how bones shift after blunt force trauma and during decomposition to determine if the remains had been buried and how the teeth had dislodged from the jaw bones. The reconstructed skull was surface scanned and 3D printed, forming the foundation for a reconstructed head crafted by world-renowned paleo-artists and identical twins, Adri and Alphonse Kennis. They built up layers of artificial muscle and skin to unveil a face. Further analysis strongly indicates that Shanidar Z was an older female, possibly in her mid-forties, an impressive age for that time in prehistory. Lacking pelvic bones, the team depended on sequencing tooth enamel proteins to identify her sex. Her age was also estimated by analyzing the degree of wear on her teeth, with some front teeth worn down to the root. 
standing about five feet tall and possessing some of the smallest adult arm bones found in the Neanderthal fossil record, her physical attributes also suggest she was female. While remains of at least ten distinct Neanderthals have been extracted from the cave, Shanidar Z is the fifth to be discovered in a group of bodies buried around the same time and in the same area, just behind a massive vertical rock, originally over two meters tall, positioned at the cave's center. This rock, which had fallen from the ceiling long before the burials, is believed to have acted as a marker, helping Neanderthals to identify this specific site for repeated burials. Neanderthals have been portrayed negatively since the first discoveries over 150 years ago, remarked Professor Graham Barker from Cambridge's MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research, who is leading the excavations. Our findings suggest that the Shanidar Neanderthals might have contemplated death and its implications in ways that were not too dissimilar from their closest evolutionary relatives, us, remarks, scientists. The other four bodies in this cluster were unearthed by archaeologist Ralph Selecki in 1960. One was found with clusters of ancient pollen. Selecki, together with pollen specialist Arlette Leroy Gourin, argued that these findings indicated funerary practices, possibly involving the deceased being placed on a bed of flowers. This archaeological research was among the first to propose that Neanderthals were much more sophisticated than previously thought, challenging the earlier views of them as primitive beings due to their robust physiques and pronounced brow ridges. Decades after Selecki's excavations, a team of scientists revisited the site, employing the latest technologies to gather further evidence supporting his contentious claims, as well as to explore the environment and behaviours of both the Neanderthals and later modern humans who inhabited the area when they discovered Shanidar Z. Shanidar Cave was first utilised by Neanderthals and subsequently by Homo sapiens, making it an excellent site to explore one of the pivotal questions in human history. Why did Neanderthals vanish around the same time that Homo sapiens expanded into regions where Neanderthals had thrived for nearly half a million years? Recent research led by Professor Chris Hunt from Liverpool John Moores University suggests that the pollen found at the site might have been deposited by bees burrowing into the cave floor. Nevertheless, the remains from Shanidar Cave still indicate a species capable of empathy. For instance, one male with paralysis in one arm, deafness and severe head injuries likely causing partial blindness, lived to an advanced age, indicating he was cared for by others. Site analyses indicate that Shanidar Z was interred in a channel carved by flowing water, which had been further excavated by hand to fit the body. The positioning of her body suggests she was propped against a side, with her left hand tucked under her head and a rock placed behind her head like a small pillow. While Shanidar Z was buried around the same time as other bodies in the cluster, researchers cannot definitively say they were contemporaneous, only that all date back to about 75,000 years ago. In fact, during filming for a new documentary in 2022, more remains were found in the same burial cluster, including a left shoulder blade, some ribs, and a relatively intact right hand. Above this layer, Selecki had found three Neanderthals dating back about 50,000 years, with further remains now recovered by the current team. Recent studies have also found microscopic traces of charred food in the soil around the older body cluster. These remains of wild seeds, nuts, and grasses indicate that Neanderthals not only prepared food by soaking and pounding pulses, but also cooked it near their dead. The body of Shanidar Z was within arm's reach of living individuals who were cooking with fire and eating. For these Neanderthals, there seems to have been no distinct separation between life and death. 
scientists observed Neanderthals returning to a specific spot to bury their dead, which could span decades or even millennia. Is this merely coincidental, or is there a deliberate reason for their return? As an older female, Shanidar Z would have held a wealth of knowledge for her community, and here we are, 75,000 years later, still learning from her. Please like and subscribe for more such videos. Thanks for watching.